What's going on guys? MMA Professor, gonna do UFC 112 predictions. Gonna be a two-parter, and I'll, let me break it down for you. The first part is going to be my undercard predictions and uh, my thoughts on the whole 112 in Abu Dhabi uh, scenario. So let's just get into the picks first, um, cause get those out of the way, and then I can talk about you know the the scene of the event. Mustafa Al Turk against John Madsen. Uh, it seems like the UFC was gonna cut Al Turk after his loss to Mirko Krokop, but you can't cut somebody after they get accidentally poked in the eye and finish. So they're like, all right, here you go. Madsen saw him on the Tough Show. He's basically just a wrestler and a better one than Mustafa Al Turk. Uh, well, Al Turk's probably the better overall grappler, but you know. Madsen's a decent, probably, he's never going to be the champion or anything, but he'd be a good gatekeeper-ish level guy. John Madsen, unanimous decision. Probably a fairly boring fight. Paul Kelly against Matt Veach. I think it surprises me that people are picking Kelly in this one a lot, or a lot of people are picking him, because in order for Paul Kelly to do what he does best, he generally takes people down and works his top game. Uh, good ground and pound, stuff like that. Uh, he's His boxing is decent. He is training uh, with Paul Taylor and Terry Adam now. So, I mean, that'll probably help him. Uh, but he's still fairly one-dimensional as far as that's concerned. I think Veach is clearly the better wrestler. Um, not only technique-wise, but power-wise. And I think, you know, his boxing is also very decent. Um you know, against Frankie Edgar, he got roughed up on the feet, but he also hit Edgar with a couple good shots, and uh, so I, I don't think the Edgar fight is really indicative of how good his striking is, um, because it's decent, and he has the power advantage. So I'm going to go with Matt Veach, my second round TKO. Um, I think he hits, he'll, you know, I don't think Kelly can do anything really to him in this fight. So there you go. Brad Blackburn against Demarcus Johnson. Uh, this is one of those fights where I have no idea. It's like Blackburn shows up and knocks out Jay Heron in 40 seconds, or he looks like he's, his feet are embedded in concrete, wet cement for the whole fight. So, I mean, if Blackburn, like, he's clearly the better technical striker. Um, on the ground, DeMarcus is... A fairly underrated grappler. Um, he uses scrambles a lot to get positions. Like, uh, well, it wasn't a scramble in his last fight when he upkicked uh, Edgar Garcia and, you know, then triangle choked him. But, and Demarcus has a decent chin. I mean, he recovers quickly from it. So, even if Blackburn hits him with a couple shots, I don't know. Demarcus could recover. Um, so I think it's going to be a Demarcus Johnson sub. I mean. Blackburn hasn't been finished all that often. Majority of his losses are by decision. So he is difficult to finish. Uh, and I think Blackburn is more capable of finishing DeMarcus than the other way around. So I'm going to go Blad, uh, Brad Blackburn by late first round TKO. And uh, <laughs> that's, I don't know, that's kind of weird that I would pick that because it's probably not going to happen. But, uh, yeah, we'll go with that. It, it was just one of those fights. There's a couple uh, fights on this card that I'm like, dude, I have no idea. I've gone, changed my picks on MMA Playground like six different times. And then there's some that are fairly easy. Nico Shipshack against Rick Story. Fairly difficult fight um, to pick. Rick Story is a powerhouse wrestler. Very good s slams. Uh, he likes to get into brawls. I think that... It could favor Oshipshak on the feet. Um, he's a pretty good technical striker and a decent grappler. I think Rick Story puts this where he wants to in this fight. Uh, he, he, both guys have pretty decent cardio. Rick Story's, he'll go full force all the time. Um, if Rick gets into a brawl and Oshipshak is, you know, keeps a level head about it, I think he could pick apart uh, Story. And, I mean, he could catch him in a sub, but I'm going to go with Rick Story by unanimous decision. I think he takes him down, slams him, works ground and pound, and 
on the feet. He could, I think he's got the heavier hands too, so he could do some damage there. So Rick Story, unanimous decision. John Gunderson against Paul Taylor. This is one that I've been going back and forth on a couple times. Because, you know, Gunderson is, he's one of those typical, uh, well, becoming more and more so typical guys that are very well-rounded in that he's got decent wrestling, decent jiu-jitsu, decent hands. So he does the whole game very well. Uh, he's not great at any one of those, and I think in order to beat Paul Taylor, he's going to have to be at least good to great in the wrestling aspect, because Taylor's, uh, you know, he gets taken down a lot. Um, it's difficult to finish him. I mean, like, Marcus Davis took him down, Paul Kelly took him down, um, but if Taylor can avoid the takedown, um, he should be able to rough up Gunderson pretty well on the feed. Gunderson, a pretty good boxer, but... Taylor is uh, the much more versed striker, I would say, uh, especially with his kicks and, and whatnot. Uh, also, Paul Taylor dropping to 155, which doesn't help his, you know, non-wrestling ability, but, you know, whatever. Uh, he's also training, like I said, with Paul, uh, Paul Kelly now and, uh, and Terry Adam. I'm going to go with Paul Taylor by... Maybe a TKO, but unanimous decision, keeping it on the feet, sprawl and brawl, outwork Gunderson, and take a decision that way. Phil Davis against Alexander Gustafson. Yes, easy one to call. Phil Davis, second round submission. Maybe first. Uh, Gustafson has one chance, and it's to hit Davis with a shot, as with a huge punch or kick as Davis is coming in. If he can't do that, Davis is going to take him down. And Davis, for being the great wrestler that he is, is fairly good at guard passing, and uh, he's pretty good at jiu-jitsu as well. Uh, Gustafson is kind of like Brian Stan, but not as well-rounded. And So take that for what it's worth. Okay, now let, 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 me, uh, let me talk about the Abu Dhabi card for a second. There's a good article by, I don't know, I'll put the link up in the bottom bar, because it's not a sidebar anymore, about the, I don't know, insanity that is the Abu Dhabi card. It's an outdoor stadium. It's not even built yet, so it's still going to be under construction while it's going. Um, and, you know, there's no plan B. If it rains, which it is not going to do, it's Abu Dhabi. I mean, the median temperature is like, or the mean temperature is probably like 95 degrees. Probably not that hot, but you get my point. Um, wind and sand and all this stuff, so it's it's weird, that dynamic of it. And, uh, you know, just read the article. It's a good article. It's ba it basically like it, uh, all my sentiments about it, all my uh, breakdowns of how absurd it is to have an outdoor card in Abu Dhabi where, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to put that up there. So that's my undercard predictions and thoughts about how absurd it is to have a card in the middle of a desert. Uh, so next video, main card predictions.